Uh, Dr. Eric Scanson, and today I'm thrilled to be bringing you just another incredible episode packed with insights and some inspiration. And today we have the privilege of welcoming uh, one of our true educational leaders in the Midwest to the show, Jay Posick. Uh, Jay is a retired school principal and co-author of the book, Principles in Action. And uh, I'm sure having spent some years in the trenches with the school administration, uh, I know that Jay is going to be bringing us a wealth of information and experience today and especially a passion for empowering um, students, staff, fellow leaders. Uh, he has been dedicated to positive change. And uh, Jay's going to be talking about his uh, incredible journey and some of the challenges. And I all I can say is get ready to be inspired from uh, Jay Posick today on Talent Dead. So with that, Jay, welcome to the show. Thanks, Eric. I really appreciate that. So uh, as you mentioned, I am a retired uh, middle school principal of 15 years as a middle school principal, five as an assistant principal in the middle school before that, and 15 years as a teacher, 13 of those in middle school. So I've got 32 of my 35 years um, in, uh, in middle school. So you either love middle school or you hate middle school. And I'll be honest, uh, middle school is, is, is me. Um, I, I joke every once in a while that I'm the oldest eighth grader alive. Uh, <laughs> just like to have fun. Um, and, and one of the things that I really tried to concentrate on, especially in my last, last years as, as principal, was making sure that um, I didn't spend a lot of time in my office, especially when students are, and staff are in the building. Um, you could find me out in front of school greeting kids, unless the weather was really, really bad, mm -hmm. then it was indoors greeting them. But uh, with my jammy pack playing music as, as they came in, uh, walking the hallways, uh, stepping into classes, and uh, just trying to be a part of, of the whole educational experience. I just found that that uh, hanging out in your office, all you're doing is waiting for bad things to come to you. So it's really important to, to get out of your office and get into the school, get into classrooms, get into the cafeteria, go out for recess, be in the hallways, just be in all those places where, where, the, where the action is and, and be a real part of of the action. Um, that's just, that's just kind of how I, 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 I worked. And, uh, I actually never felt like I went to work. I felt like I went to school every day. I've been going to school since I was in kindergarten and it's just been, uh, just a great experience for me. Well, it sounds, uh, it sounds like you were really embedded in the, the climate and culture of the school and out there making a difference each and every day. So, I mean, that's really impressive. And middle school, again, I think you hit it right on the head as a some people love it. Some people hate it. Uh, middle schoolers are special people. And uh, I'm so glad we have special people that are out there uh, engaging with them because they it's such a key developmental time for kids and, as they're trying to find themselves and try to find their identity. So it's really important, I think, as you said, to, to be available for them. Yeah, they're, so, they're really trying to figure out who they are, you know, and, and uh, if they're just sometimes it's just uh, sitting down at the cafeteria at the table mm -hmm. with somebody who's sitting all by themselves and saying, hey, it looks like today's just not a good day for you. Is there anything I can do to help? And and uh, we try to try to build one of those climates where when when students notice that, that they'd go and join others. And sometimes kids just need to be alone with their own thoughts. And mm -hmm. other times they need to have somebody there to support them. So just finding the right ways to connect is really, really important. Oh, I think that's such an important uh, idea of finding the right way to connect. As, as middle schoolers, I... I I've not found a middle schooler who doesn't want to talk. It just depends on how they want to talk, right? If they want to talk in, in person, um, you know, in, in private or, you know, interacting in a large group, they really do want to connect. Uh, so I, I guess I have a couple of questions for you just as a, as a former school principal. Uh, and how did you really actively engage with those students and teachers outside your office? You talked about the jammy pack, um, yeah. being out there in the mornings. Um, how did you stay connected to really kind of feel the pulse of the, the school community every day? You know, um, I, I think there, there were people that knew what my, like my little route was at the beginning of the day. Like they, they could tell when I was coming down the hallway, first of all, they could probably hear the music coming out of my jammy pack as I'm walking down the hall, but they knew I was going to check in. I checked in with, tried to check in with every single teacher every morning as, as I was walking the hallways. Um, and when you're greeting kids in the morning, you can kind of tell whether it's going to be a good day or a bad day. You can kind of tell if it was uh, 
they had a, a rough morning before they got to school. Um, you know, some kids really, they thrive because they're, they're at school and uh, maybe don't have the best home situation and you try and connect with them. I remember during the pandemic, I actually, uh, I would do Zoom calls or Google Meets with, with students and they would sign up and I'd have 15, 20, 25 kids that all they wanted to do was talk. You know, we had our mm-hmm. classes going on and, and uh, for the most part, our teachers had, had recorded lessons so the kids could do the, the 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 work whenever they needed to, but there was that half an hour's worth of time, and there was this core group of ten kids and I that would just sit and we would talk about you know, how things were going, what what can I do to support, mm. um, all of the different things that that you know no one ever went through a pandemic like that before. So it was it was just a nice way for me to connect. Um, you know, recess time was always. Uh, the, the interesting thing is my superintendent said I was the highest paid cafeteria and recess supervisor in the state of Wisconsin. And I said, and how many issues have you noticed on the playground in their cafeteria since I've been principal? And he said, uh, well, five or six. And I said, and those were the times when when you were the one covering for me because I was at a conference or or at a parent meeting or something like that. And he would giggle about that. But, you know, you can waste your whole day trying to take care of a recess situation if you're not there. So um, and interestingly, um, I just got hired on in a, in a neighboring district as a part-time dean of students. Uh, I've got a 20% position, so I work eight hours That's a fun. week, which is going to be amazing for me. And it's the school that I worked at um, this last year. I was a, a guest teacher and a guest administrator, and uh, I had kids inviting me to concerts. I had kids inviting me to um, you know, their graduation ceremonies, all of those different sorts of things, uh, just because once I took over that role as assistant principal on a part-time basis, I, I wasn't in the office. I was mm-hmm. out and about and in classrooms and still trying to do the same things. I didn't bring my jammy pack with me. That wasn't, I didn't want to infringe upon uh, the culture of the school that I had gone into. But um, it, it's one of those things that um, I just found ways to make connections with kids as much as I possibly could and and uh, and sought out their those connections, just, especially the kids that, that looked like they needed some, uh, you know, some extra mm-hmm. TLC, you know. Well, you are a, a special uh, breed of principal, and really one of my favorites is, as your book says, principals in action, right? Ones that are out and about, and not just telling kids to get in line, you know, not just correcting, but really connecting. Yeah. Um, that's one of the things we say at School Pro is, is connect before correct. And I think you had a, have intuitively um, really found that this worked for you yeah. um, for many years. Um and what a testament to you that kids are signing up to talk with you over the <laughs> pandemic, right? Like, yeah, like yeah. they didn't have to do that. No, it they was, wanted it was, to it was, yeah, you. it's pretty amazing. And, and you know, um, in, in Wisconsin, there's a lot of festivals, there's church festivals, there's city festivals. And, and I happened to be at, at one on Saturday and there were a couple of kids from the school that I, not that I was at principal at, but the one that I was working at this last year. And they went out of their way to come over and say hi to me and, and uh, just make a connection. My wife's, my wife says, who are those people? I saw those are a couple of seventh graders pr- from, from the school where I'm working at. And she said, Oh my goodness. You know, so she, she has seen it too. Mm-hmm. And, and, and the other person who's seen it is my daughter. My daughter is actually a teacher now. Um, she's going to be a special ed teacher in a district not too far from us. So um, she's grown up having a principal as a dad. So she really hasn't known any different. But right. uh, she wears uh, she wears I've got these principles in action brace that might be hard to see on here. But one side says principles in action, the other side says get out of your office. Well, she wears that all the time. She mm-hmm. wears it wherever she goes. And uh, when people ask her questions, she she talks about uh, you know the message that that Mark French and Ryan Sheehy and I tried to send in our book, Principles in Action. Uh, do you have a specific example of maybe a time when getting out of your office and being present um, at a school event had a significant impact on your school's needs or or success of a particular initiative? Wow, that's that's a great question. You know, I just um, it, it's interesting because um, I was at every single concert except for one uh, my 15 year uh, career in Merton where I was, um, and I I don't even remember why I wasn't there. It must have been there must have been an illness in the family or a death in the family, something like that. But I was the one who always introduced uh, before the concerts Mm -hmm. got started and and just talked about um, the kids as a whole. And I remember one time after one of the concerts, um, I I got a little choked up every once in a while. I get a little emotional when I'm talking about things and a granddad uh, stepped up and he said, uh, don't ever apologize for crying in front of people. And I said, sir, he goes, you know what? You're a real person. That's what people know. That's what people mm-hmm. like about you, that you, that you, you are who you are. I don't hide anything. I'm just, it, it's who I am. So I'm getting a little choked up even thinking about it right now. And, and I know that every single graduation speech that I gave for our eighth graders, 
I, I either cried at the beginning or cried at the <laughs> end or cried in the middle. And it's, I think that people really understood that, that I was there for their kids and cared about them and loved them and wanted them to be successful, not just at our school, but as they moved on into their, you know, into high school mm -hmm. and beyond, what, whatever that, whatever that brought for them. So what's great for me is I, I live in the town where I was a principal. So I still see kids, you know, I was invited to a, uh, a birthday party of a, of a, of a former student and he's 25 years old, you know? So it's, it's one That's of those amazing. things where, you, where the connections are, are still there and uh, they remember conversations we have, you know, I have, you know, they'll say, Mr. Postig, I remember when I was in your office and I had done something completely and totally stupid, but you didn't talk to me about that. You talked to me about how I should make better decisions and, and how I could be a role model for others and those sorts of things. And now, now he owns his own business. You know, those kinds of stories, they happen. And I think a lot of it has to do with the fact of just sitting down, you know, they're, they're kids, yes, but you need to treat them with respect and you'll get that respect back. And when they realize that there's respect going back and forth, um, the, uh, the growth that you see is just mm -hmm. amazing. Well, principals play such a key role in the success of a school. Like it, we, we know that it is one of the most important roles. And I think you've done a nice job of both the success in your school, but also affecting your community. And uh, that's really amazing. I bet that some people watching might think, well, that's nice, Jay, but you know, you still have all these administrative duties that you need to get done. <laughs> You yeah. could be out of your office all day, but you still have things that need to get done. Do you have any uh, key tips for both being accessible and, and present, but also yeah. finishing the the other work that doesn't sure. mean 90 hours a week? Yeah, 90 hours is a little extreme, I would say. But um, I, I would probably say I probably was a 50 to 60 hour a, a week worker, just to be honest. Um, uh, school for us started at 10 minutes to nine. So it was a late start and I would be at school anywhere between five 30 and six. And there's a, okay. it's amazing how much work you can get done when you're the only one in the building. There's sure. no, the, the phone's not ringing. If emails are coming in, you know, they're, they're here and there, it's really not that big of a deal, but that's when I would get all of my teacher evaluations taken care of. That's when I would take care of, you know, all answering emails, you know, I have this rule that I don't answer an email after nine o'clock at night. People didn't think I would stick to it. Well, I stuck to it. And then it all, it became known. I mean, the, the, the community knew that if you email Jay after nine o'clock, he's not going to get back to you. And mm -hmm. when he does get back to you, it's probably when he wakes up at four 30 or five o'clock. So expect your phone to ding because he's answering your email mm -hmm. at that time. Well, the teachers were able to take care of that too. So now at nine o'clock teachers can be done, not have to worry about things. And, uh, you know, you, you set your parameters and, and things can get done. So I did a lot of things before school. Mm -hmm. So that was, you know, that was close to three hours worth of work that I could get done. And then my secretary was amazing. I mean, if, if I needed to be in the office, uh, she could message me and I'd, I'd quickly be there. I hated carrying a walkie talkie around. And the reason for that was all the banter that goes on in the mm -hmm. walkie talkie. And I can't sit in a classroom and the walkie talkies going off. You just can't, you can't do that. But you can reach me by text. You can reach me by Google chat, whatever the case mm -hmm. might be. So that's how I was found. So if I was needed somewhere, I could leave the spot that I was to go somewhere else. Right. But then there was also those times in my schedule where I knew I had to block off an hour because I was going to do a teacher evaluation. Or I was going to have a meeting with a teacher. I was going to have a family meeting. So those sorts of things you just have. I worked closely with my secretary and she had access to my calendar. And normally I was the one who set appointments, but she could see if there was an availability in case there was something that I had to deal with. So um, it's having some, and, and it was just, it was myself and the secretary that was my office staff, right? So mm -hmm. just the two people were the ones that kind of were the, were the lifeblood of, of, of organizing how, how, how the school day went. Sure. So um, that, that, that helped me a lot. Were there times where I had to say, all right, I'm going to be in my office for half an hour. Just leave me alone. I've got, I've got mm -hmm. to get the, yes, there were times like that, but for the most part, I would pick those times when I knew that there wasn't cafeteria duty or lunch duty um, and that all kids were in classes so that there weren't a lot of transitions, that's when I would do that because then I knew that things for the most part were going to be, they're, they're, they're going to be handled uh, within the classroom. Right. So um, that's kind of how I, that's kind of how I work things out. Jay, I mean, you're, you're really kind of a master at that relationship building, both with staff and students. I mean, to have that kind of relationship with your, your secretary as well. I mean, you can just feel the authenticity and the, 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 the real connections that you had with people. Do you have any strategies or practices that uh, you've found uh, effective in fostering those relationships with whomever? Yeah. So my favorite one is called the two by 10. So it's two minutes for 10 days in a row. 
So uh, let's say, Eric, uh, I notice that you're not having such a good day and mm -hmm. I spend two minutes with you and you're the one who's leading the conversation. It's not me. I'm just there for you so we can talk. And then the next day I would check in again and two minutes, Eric, you and I would have a conversation and that would go on for 10 days. Nice. And that's one of those things that that because I'm not the one leading the conversation, you're leading the conversation, the, 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 the relationship seems to foster itself, right? And then there's conversations about, hey, so you got a football game this weekend on Saturday, I'll do my best to be there, but my daughter's also got a dance competition, mm -hmm. it might not work out, those sorts of things. But those are the, you know, you gotta be real with the kids too, right? So um, that two by 10 strategy has worked really, really like well that. for me. Um, and sometimes it only takes five, right? But right. two by 10 is kind of the goal. And uh, am I still going to check in with kids? Absolutely. The other thing that I, you know, because I was in the cafeteria so much, kids are kids are creatures of habit as to where they sit. And when you notice that there's a change in the seating arrangement, that's a time for me or for one of the, the you know, I, I had, there were, there was a custodian myself and then um, normally an instructional assistant who were in the cafeteria. One of the three of us would notice a change in seating mm -hmm. and would come to each other and go, hmm, did you notice that Eric's not sitting with his group of friends that he's been, maybe we should go over and see what's up with Eric, that kind of thing. Um, we also are really good about figuring out which kids were eating and weren't eating. Mm. And why, you know, why, why aren't you eating today? And, and so, for some kids, it's a legitimate reason. You know, Mr. Posick, you know, I take my meds right before lunch. As soon as I take my meds, my stomach's upset. I can't eat, but I'll have a snack later. Don't worry about it, right? Those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. So those are the kinds of things that because I'm there and, and, and interact with the kids and, and I see that, you know, you can kind of see things and hopefully take care of them before they get uh, too far down the line, right? Wow. So, uh, so, I mean, kind of as a wrap up question here, in your experience, you're a very active presence, right? In your school environment. Mm -hmm. How does that contribute to that positive school culture and climate? And, and maybe can you provide some examples of how, again, your involvement has influenced overall climate, culture, staff morale, student engagement. You, I mean, you take it where you want to go. Yeah. But, uh, no, so I, I talk about being in classrooms a lot. And I remember I'm going to tell two stories. One is one of my first years in my first year as, as a principal. Um, we had a very well respected fourth grade teacher. And every time I walked into her classroom, everything stopped. And she would say, OK, class, say hi to Mr. Posick. And I'd say they'd say hi and I'd say hi back. So I had I've had very few all staff meetings. We'd have one a month, maybe. Right. Because I would be able to take care of things mm -hmm. in grade level meetings or team meetings or one on one with 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 staff. So I had her come to the front of the of, of the meeting and I said, uh, so I just have to ask you, I'm not going to mention her name. She's a, she's a dear friend. And actually, um, through happenstance, my daughter had her as a teacher as well. So I said, uh, every time I walk into your room, what do you do? And she says, what do you mean? I said, here's what you do. You stop everything you're doing. You say, everybody, let's say hi to Mr. Posick. And then you've got to get things all started and go back to where you were before. I said, when I walk into the room, just go as business as usual. If there's something that I need, you'll know it. Otherwise, I'm just there to watch you master the craft that you have. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you're, you're, a you're an incredible teacher. I want to watch you do what you're doing because then I can share some of the things that you do with the other teachers, right? All of this kind of stuff. So that was the last time anybody stopped the class when I walked in. And now I would have teachers who would say to me, Jay, you haven't been in my room for, 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 for two days. What's going on? Is I, did I do something wrong? That's kind of how <laughs> that got built, right? Because they expected to see me there. Right. So there's that that goes on. Um, and I think the other thing is the kids knew that I was there and they knew that I was aware of what they were learning. You know, my favorite phone calls were when parents say, hey, did you hear what's happening in so-and-so's class? I said, yes. I, you know, what's amazing is I was just in there today. Can you believe that they're doing this, this, and this? And they're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You knew about that? Yep. And you can't believe what the kids are learning by this particular you know, tactic that this, this teacher is using. And, you know, sometimes that diffuse some of those conversations, sure. right? So being there um, helps the teachers know that I'm there to support them. Number one, number two, it helps me to share some of the teaching strategies um, that they're using with others. And sometimes I would walk into a classroom and say, Hey, you don't need to go two doors down. I'm going to watch your class for five minutes. You go two doors down, just watch what's going on there and then come back. We'll have a little conversation. Teachers love to have that opportunity because mm -hmm. otherwise you got to get a sub who wants to prepare for a sub, right? right. That, that's all that extra work that you have to do. So Jay, Jay's going to pop in for five minutes and let me go and see somebody teach. That sounds like a great idea, right? So that was all before we had instructional coaches. And now we have instructional coaches that were, that were doing that for us. So, um, and I think the other thing, the kids truly know that, um, 
I cared about them and wanted the school to be as successful as possible. You know, I, I mentioned attending concerts, uh, the school plays, you know, attending those mm -hmm. all the time. I was at every single parent teacher conference, um, sometimes scaring kids walking into their conferences because their parents would like, well, why is Mr. Posa here? Just, I just want to hear about the great things your kids doing in class. Right. So those kinds of things happen and people remember that. Right. And uh, so I just think being that presence and trying to be as positive as I mean, not, not like grossly positive, but be as positive as mm -hmm. you possibly can. Um, and I think the other thing I was able to do that helped a lot was to deflect a lot of the incoming garbage that can happen into a school. And I was the one who tried to 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 disperse that as much mm -hmm. as possible so that the teachers didn't really have to deal with that, you know, um, so just uh, it's little, it's all those little tiny things that it add is. together, right? There's not one big thing. There's all those little tiny things. Like Joe Sanfilippo would say, you make relationships in 30 second increments. Mm -hmm. um, that's the kind of thing that I tried to do um, throughout my, throughout my career as a, as an administrator and as a teacher as well. Well, your teachers and your staff, your parents, everybody was so fortunate to have uh, such an active principal. Well, thank you. And uh, it really shows in the success that you've had. Um, we're going to change gears for a second. All right. We're going to do a two by 10, two okay. choices, two choices, 10 questions. Okay. All right. So this is an, ad, an adaptation, two question, <laughs> two choices, 10 questions. Are you ready? All right. I am. One, coffee or tea? Tea. Two, cats or dogs? Dogs. Morning lark or night owl? Morning lark. Beach vacation or mountain getaway? Beach vacation. Fiction or nonfiction? Uh, nonfiction. City life or country living? Country living. Sweet or savory? Sweet. Uh, books or movies? Uh, movies. Uh, indoor activity or outdoor adventure? Outdoor adventure. And last one, text message or phone call? Phone call. There we go. That is uh, two by two choices by 10 questions for Jay Posick uh, here on Talent Dead. We get to know you a little bit more, uh, not only through those questions, but mainly through just your incredible stories of relationships and connections. So um, everybody, if you want to work with Jay, um, give us a call here at School Pro. And we are going to get you connected to Jay uh, I think it would be a great opportunity to work with some principals in your district, really talking about how do you become a principal in action. And of course, check out his book. Uh, he is a co-author of Principals in Action. Uh, great, great stories in there. Do you have a final call to action for us, Jay? Um, I really think, so I, I'm fortunate enough now to be retired and can pick and choose the things that I want to do, right? And I've chosen to mentor principals and I've chosen to go back and be a part-time dean of students. I've chosen mm -hmm. to be a, a guest teacher. And in all of those uh, roles, one of the things I talk about is just making sure that you're out of your office and as, vi and, and as visible as possible. Um, so my call to action would be to make sure that you find time in your day whether it's during the summertime or during the school year, get out of your office, go connect with somebody and find out what's really happening in your school. Thank you, Jay. That was a great uh, words of wisdom. And I want to thank you so much for coming on with us today. Absolutely. Um, Jay is an, one of our incredible humans uh, that uh, I think you're going to love if you get to know him even more. Uh, so again, thank you for tuning in to uh, this episode of Talent Dad. And if you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe, leave us a review. And if you have any suggestions or future for future topics or guests, please contact us and let us know. And until next time, keep learning, keep growing, and of course, stay PKS, which is positive, kind, and supportive. Thanks, everybody.